Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Davis here at home. And today for math, I was thinking it might be fun to do a little bit more with the grouchy ladybug. You know, that story was really entertaining. And also, this grouchy ladybug definitely learned a big lesson at the end. I always like to think about stories, not only listening and enjoying them, but I like to also connect other skills and activities. So today, we're gonna be thinking about our ladybug story, and we're gonna make some math connections. Now, we're gonna be doing a few review math activities, and they will be ladybug related. So let me tell you about some activities that you can work on to review your math skills. So, you know when we read the, the Grouchy Ladybug, I was showing you all the little analog clocks up in the corner, so you know there's a lot of time telling. Time on the hour is especially focused on in this story. And so, today, for our first activity, I want you to get out your little mini clock and I want you to be thinking about every hour that the grouchy ladybug flew off, each time he flew away, he met a new creature. Hour after hour. So let's practice our time on the hour skills. Get that little mini clock. You're gonna be working on your own and here's what you're going to do. I have a little skill sheet here. It contains 12 ladybugs. In each ladybug, you can spy digital time, time on the hour. What I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do to practice those time on the hour skills is I want you to go in order. Each ladybug forward is one hour later. So one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. And that just reminds me of how the grouchy ladybug went off and each time he went off, it was a new hour when he met a new creature until the very end. So practice your time on the hour skills and just go in order. That will be the first practice and then change it up just a bit. And then go back to this sheet and then go down. Yeah, you can go one o'clock and then four o'clock and seven o'clock, just change it up and practice your time on the hour skills. Don't forget that the shorthand is pointing to the hour and the long hand is the minute hand. Remember that the minutes are on the outer edge of our little clocks because this minute hand is going way past that 12 reading those minutes. So don't forget as you're working on your time on the hour, which hand does which job. That's your first activity. Your second activity does still involve time. We've been working a little bit on some time stories together. So I found this one in my collection of time stories. I'm trying to rearrange it here on my clipboard. It's Grouchy Ladybug time. It's a time story with the, the Grouchy Ladybug. So I'm gonna email this to your family members or send it via Blooms, but if you don't have any way to print it, I'll talk to you as we work through it, how you can be a problem solver and complete this sheet without even having the sheet. So the first thing we're gonna do is read through and discuss what you're going to be doing. If you print the sheet, you'll just be marking the time on the little mini clocks. If you can't print the sheets, then you can just draw the clocks and fill the time in. So let me read through the story. It says the grouchy ladybug woke up at five o'clock and that's digital time. Draw the hands on the face clock to show what time it woke up. So you're just gonna be drawing the hands if you print this sheet. If not, you can go ahead and draw an analog clock. 
Remember how we did that in our practices? We drew a circle, we put 12, and then opposite of it, we put six, and then nine and three because we're setting it up in those fractional parts. And then the other numbers can be filled in very quickly and easily. So if you need to go ahead and draw those little clocks, it will be easy, you can do it. And then draw five o'clock by putting the hands into your made up clock. It eats some aphids at nine o'clock, draw the hands on the face clock to show the time that the ladybug eats breakfast. So you'll just draw nine o'clock, draw the hands in. If you need to draw the whole clock, that's fine too. It flies down the path around that time. You're gonna read it and it meets a dragonfly. Show the digital time. So on that one, you're gonna write in the digital time to match this clock, or you can just draw your little digital clock, which will be very easy. It buzzes past a bird at this time. That's the analog time. So again, you're gonna make a digital match to this time. It races past a whale fin at four o'clock. I noticed when I was reading this that it said shark. So I just scratched that out and wrote whale. Draw the hands on the face clock to show the time that the ladybug went past the whale fin. So again, draw the hands on the clock. It spies another ladybug and smiles. It is now seven o'clock. Show the digital time. So you're matching, matching. That's the word o'clock. That's another way to say time on the hour. The sun goes down and the two ladybug friends watch the fireflies. Remember the ending of the story ended with the fireflies at night. It is now, and here's your time, and you're just gonna write the digital time. So again, I'll send this in email or on our Blooms app, and if you can print it, great. If not, just be a problem solver and draw your little clocks in, and you can complete this time story. You can do it. Okay, final activity. You know, we've been working on 10 more and 10 less, We've been finding it with our place value blocks building and, and making it. And we also have worked forward in our hundred chart, finding 10 more and 10 less. So this little ladybug activity will be fun and easy. Again, I will um, send the sheet an email or on Blooms. This is what it looks like. It's a little mini sheet. And they're giving you in the center the whole number. And then there's a blank box above and below. And so what they want you to do is think about this whole number and then write in the number that is 10 less than that number and the number that is 10 more than that number. And you're gonna do that for each of those. Mm -hmm. And then you've got another little practice down below it, okay? Again, if you don't have the ability to print this, that's fine. Here's what I did. I just created a sheet on my own and it didn't take me long at all. Here's what it looks like. I just grabbed a piece of plain paper. I wrote 10 less and 10 more. I wrote a line with those same whole numbers and then I wrote 10 minus 10 and plus 10. And I did a model up here. I've got 37. 27 is 10 less and 47 is 10 more. So you can just build your sheet exactly the same way. It only took me a few minutes. It wasn't hard at all. So again, print it if you need to, if you can. If not, you know, we are definitely working at home, but we're problem solvers. We can complete any assignment if we just put our mind to it. Okay, now you've got a few jobs to do, and I love that we're connecting a lot of skills together. You know, when we've been talking about ladybugs, we've put our science minds on, we've been re reading facts about ladybugs, and we had a fiction story that involved ladybugs. That was really fun. So we got our reading and comprehension skills in, and now we're putting our math skills to the test. 
Wow, we are amazing learners. Okay, don't forget to send me a picture of your completed math assignments. And as always, until our next teaching video, have a good one.